Father, we thank you, Lord, for your precious blood, and we thank you, Father, for all that you've done for us and all that you're yet going to do. Jesus, we love you, we honor you, we give you all the praise and all the glory. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for that precious blood that was shed for us. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus. Open up our hearts, Lord, for all that you have in store for us today, and we give you all praise, all glory, and all honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, you reign, you reign on high. Lord, you reign, you reign on high. You conquered death and the grave. You rose and live again. Lord, you reign, you reign on high. Lord, you Lord, you reign, you reign on high. You were beaten and scourged. You were pierced in your side. You took all of my sin and you gave me new life. You bore all our grief, carried all our sorrows. the grave, you rose and live again. 
again, Lord, you reign, you reign on high, Lord, you reign, you reign on high, Lord, you reign, you reign on high, you conquered death and the grave, you rose and lived again, Lord, you all of my sin and you gave me new life you bore all our grief carried all our sorrows by your stripes we are healed Lord you reign you reign on high Lord you And the grave, you rose and live again, Lord. You reign, you reign on high, Lord. You reign, you reign on high, Lord. You reign, you reign on high. You conquered death and the grave, you rose and Lord, you reign, you reign on high. You were beaten and scourged. You were pierced in your side. You took all of my sin. Yes, you gave me new life. You bore all of my grief, carried all our sorrows. You reign, you reign on high, Lord, you reign, you reign on high. You conquered death and the grave, you rose and live again, Lord, you reign, you reign on high, Lord, you Lord, you reign, you reign on high. Oh, you conquered, you conquered death in the grave. You rose and live again. Lord, you reign, you reign on high. Oh, you reign, yes, you reign, you reign on high. Yes, you reign, you reign, you reign on high.
his name forever. Exalt his name forever. Oh, we exalt you, Lord. We praise him. We praise him. Oh uh... 
upon my word for truly you need to understand all that I'm saying to you you must realize the importance of the time for the time is very late and many things shall now come to pass that you have been looking for things you have not seen before but things that are recorded in my word, and they shall come to pass. Even yet, you shall see greater storms than you saw, colder temperature than you saw. But that does not mean that global warming is not in effect. It has nothing to do with that. These storms are from the enemy who still controls the weather upon the face of the earth. You pray, and I can change. The prices shall go up because of the storms. The storms shall affect the prices of them greatly. Be prepared. Walk very close by my side. Listen very carefully to my words. 
No one understand why the attacks upon Syria and how important a part that Syria played in the spreading of the gospel at the beginning. Paul's very first missionary journey. Know these things, saith your Father God. Don't just take them as chance. They are not chance. They all have a meaning. And as you understand the meaning, you shall understand my word even more so. And you shall understand the time that you're living in. So watch, watch, pay attention, dig into my word, understand my word, know my word, be equipped in my word that you can do the things that I, your Father God, have said that you shall do, that you can be what I said you can be, that you can walk in the power, that you can walk in the authority, that you can walk in the ability that I have given unto you, for you already have it. Whether you believe it or not, you already have it. Therefore, walk in it. Fear not, nor be dismayed. For I am your Father, and I am your God, and I will truly do all that I've promised I said I would do. I will take you through victoriously. Trust me. Know who I am. Know that I'm not only just your God, but know me as your Father, one who provides, one who takes care of, <clears throat> one who gives you all that you have need of. Therefore I say unto you, do not fear, the hour or the day that you're living in, but rather walk in my perfect peace, the peace that gives you all understanding. Walk with me, know who I am. Know me that you can truly walk in the victorious life that I have already given unto you. For it is my desire that you walk in the fullness of what I have already provided for you through my son Jesus. Therefore, I say unto you, trust me like never before. Know who I am. Walk, live by my word. <clears throat> For when you live and walk by my word, you will have all that I have said that you will have. Understand my word. Study it very carefully. For I'm opening up your eyes. I'm opening up your understanding far more than at any time in the history of the world. For there's many things you need to learn quickly. You need to work. You need to learn to walk in my power, in my ability you need to allow my mind to be in you. That you empty out your mind and stop thinking with your mind and allow the Spirit to guide you 
to teach you, to instruct you. Don't wait. Don't put it off. Don't listen to man. For man is saying many things that are untrue. Notice that Iran is not the big target at the moment. It's Iraq, and you thought that was all settled. Neither is Afghanistan settled. It's going right back to what it was. All the lives, all the money, all the disasters were a waste of time, for they have not changed. They've reverted back to everything that they were before. Bye. 
and the peace that calms the storm in your presence. I find your such a good time to be in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. We just thank the Lord for his presence. Praise the Lord. Brother David. Praise the Lord. We'll continue worshiping the Lord this morning with our giving. Again, more money in the mail. We thank the Lord for all of that and all of you out there who do send in your gifts. We thank you for that. Father God, Lord, we just uh, thank you for another time, another opportunity to give into your work, into your kingdom. Lord, we just ask that you would bless the gifts and the givers, Lord. Return it to them a hundredfold. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We welcome you all to the Father's house this morning. Just a few reminders. Um, remember to keep the schools in your prayers. Um, also, keep mom and dad in your prayers. They um, <coughs> had to make a last minute trip to Minnesota. Um, one of my mom's cousins had passed away, and so they went to be with the family. and. Um, Now they're just kind of waiting for a flight back, so um, just keep that in your prayers. Um, also, today is fellowship dinner. We invite all of you to stay, even if you didn't bring anything. Praise the Lord. There's always more than enough. Hallelujah. 
All righty, Juanita. darkness in the middle of the night I'm praying for assurance everything's gonna be all right and Lord I see another battle it's out in front of me I'm afraid I won't be able and I'll go down in defeat and he said do you remember where I brought you from? Just take a look behind you and how far you've come. And oh, and every time you ask me, didn't I deliver you? So why would you be thinking that I wouldn't see you through? Didn't I walk on the water and I calmed the raging sea? I spoke to the wind, it hushed and I gave you peace. Run to your rescue, hear you when you call. I walked right beside you just so you wouldn't fall. Didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sin? I searched until I found you, and I do it all again. Now she's talking to her father in a house that was once a home. She said, my bills are coming due, Lord, and six days is not that long she hears a voice so soft and low he says I moved like that before and I'll do this little thing and I'll give you so much more didn't I walk on the water and I calmed the raging sea I spoke to the wind and it hushed and I gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you just so you wouldn't fall. Didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sin? I searched until I found you and I do it all again. Didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sin? I searched until I found you, and I do it all again. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for everything you've helped us with. Praise you, Jesus.
There we go. Sorry about that. Bear with me a moment. First Sunday of the month, time to change the batteries. If not, they usually don't make it through the service. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Our prayer request this morning, Albert from Poland says, Please pray for us as we enter into the new year for a great breakthrough that many need to be saved, many are sick, many need a healing, many need deliverance. From Amanda from the Church of Life of South Africa, please pray for miracles, healing, souls, and deliverance. Please pray for revival in our area. James and his family from Maine says, Please pray for Amy who needs a miracle as she broke her back skiing. It is a very bad break. <clears throat> the Morgans from Ohio said, Please pray for us as I work construction and there is no work during the winter months and I have five children. Since it is cold, that drains our fuel and makes it hard to eat and keep warm. Little John from Liberia says, Please continue to keep us in prayer. And our friends from the mountain on Tennessee said, Please pray concerning the cold weather, snow, and the four who need a miracle. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Well, today's your day. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you again for all these requests. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are moving mightily upon their behalf, Lord. And that it's not our might nor our power, but it's by your Spirit. Lord, and we thank you, Lord, that your Spirit is falling upon all those in need today, Lord, and upon us here, and we thank you and praise you, and we give you the praise and glory and the honor for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Um, definitely keep my mom and dad in your prayers. <clears throat> they were having a hard time getting a flight out because of the weather and such. Um, kind of set some things back. And they're going to try and come home tomorrow. I, I honestly believe it will be Tuesday before they can come home because of the weather. I believe that the Lord was showing me that this morning. So... If you're listening, Tuesday's going to be the best day. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Fall on us, a God encounter. It's the title of the message this morning, Fall on Us. Well, Peter yet spake these words, The Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Now I want to draw your attention this morning to one word in this verse, fell. That word has captured my attention. The Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. First of all, it tells me that what is happening is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's not by man. It's not by anything that he is doing, but it's by the Spirit. It tells me that the Holy Ghost is the one responsible. And if you didn't know that, the Holy Ghost is the one that's responsible for all of what we're seeing today. It doesn't say they jumped up and grabbed it or they reach out and took a hold of the Holy Ghost. It clearly says that the Holy Ghost fell upon them. Secondly, the word fell means to fall upon, to rush or press upon, come suddenly upon, to come forcibly, to seize or take possession of. One definition even says to strike, to hit. Once the Holy Ghost fell so strong on Pastor Evans, he tossed him clear across the room. 1977. I heard about it. I wasn't there. <laughs> in other words, the Holy Ghost came in an undeniable, undisputable manner. It was tangible, heavy. It was a tangible, heavy manifestation of the power of God. They were visibly and physically affected. They felt it, and anyone present could see the effects of the Spirit upon them. Praise the Lord. And I feel that people are going to see a little bit of this this morning, all over the world. Praise the Lord. As I read this scripture, my mind went to other places in the Bible where the power of God fell like this. In 1 Corinthians or 1 Chronicles, excuse me, 1 Chronicles 21, 26. It says, David made an altar to the Lord and called upon the Lord, and God answered him from, from heaven by fire upon the altar of burnt offering. So we see that the fire fell upon his altar. 
Hallelujah. Second Chronicles 7, 1, we see Solomon had a great sacrifice to the Lord. When he had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offerings and the sacrifices. Where did the fire come from? Down from heaven. Hallelujah. These were also undeniable, indisputable, irrefutable, visible, tangible manifestations of the power of God. What does tangible mean? Something that we can touch. So it was a manifestation of the Spirit of Almighty God that was manifested right before them. There was no denying that that was the power of Almighty God. Then how about the one that really stands out was Elijah when he squared off with Ahab and the false prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. What happened? The false prophet and the true prophet, the man of God Elijah, came to an agreement to find out just who God was. And God showed up. They would both build an altar and offer a sacrifice, but put no fire under it. And they would call on their respective gods, and the God that answered by fire, he would be recognized as the one true God. Then the story goes that the false prophets built their altar, laid their sacrifices on the altar, and called upon Baal from morning till noon with no answer. Elijah began to mock them. Then they became violent and went into a frenzy and began to jump on the altar, cut themselves with knives and lancelets until the blood gushed out upon them. Have you ever had to see a true manifestation of God happen that way? That we have to get so crazy and, and begin to basically kill ourselves is what they were doing. They were, they were cutting themselves and whatever. And they continued from noon till evening, sacrificed five to six hours or more. And what happened? Nothing. Because they were calling out to a dead God. Then Elijah took over. It was his turn now. He repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. He put the wood in order and put the sacrifice on the wood. Then he had them pour 12 barrels of water on the sacrifice. Then he prayed a short prayer of less than 20 seconds. What happens? Here we see a manifestation of God's power. And the Bible says, Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. There was nothing left. <clears throat> and when the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. So you see, when we see these manifestations of the Holy Ghost when he falls upon us, even the passerbys, anyone that's present, they realize that, oh, there is a true God, and they turn on to him because the facts are undeniable. There was undeniable, unreprovable evidence that God showed up that day. Praise the Lord. The fact is, what happened upon the mountain was so far powerful and so undeniable that it turned a whole nation back to God. <clears throat> no man has anywhere near close to that power. They experienced a visible, tangible manifestation of the power of God. They had a God encounter. We need a God encounter. People all over the world need a God encounter. Today is the day for that God encounter. Hallelujah. I'm believing for fire to fall in a powerful way, not only here but all over the world. The fire of God, the power of God fell upon that mountain, on that altar, and that sacrifice, and what happened? Revival came. God was restored. We're waiting for that revival today. We're waiting for that fire to fall. Hallelujah. Because then there's undeniable, irrefutable evidence of the power of God. Hallelujah. Then my mind goes to Acts 2, 1 through 4. And when that day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly 
There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared upon them cloven tongues like a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. Suddenly the fire of God fell upon them. Hallelujah. The Lord has told us, suddenly we shall see it happen. The fire of God fell on David's altar and burnt offerings. The fire of God fell on Solomon's offering and sacrifices. The Holy Ghost fire of God, the power of God, fell on Mount Carmel that day where Elijah met the prophets of Baal. The Holy Ghost fire fell on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost fire fell on the Gentiles in Cornelius' house. You remember that story? <clears throat> In every case, Old and New Testament, it was a visible, tangible, undeniable manifestation of the power of God. It wasn't anything they could dream up. It wasn't anything they could work up. It was purely God moving in all his might and all his power so that his name might be lifted up and glorified and that people would fall upon their knees and turn on to God. Hallelujah. What really concerns me today is we are raising a generation of Christians who have never had a God encounter. I've personally had a God encounter in my life. Not to the greatness of these, but I've seen God move in my life. I hope that we all have here, but it is very true that most Christians don't really see these things. They've never experienced it. Well, I'll tell you what, there's people that are going to experience one today. Hallelujah. I felt it in my spirit from the time the worship service started and the Lord was speaking it into my um, spirit man. Hallelujah. They, <clears throat> they have never experienced a tangible, undeniable manifestation of the power of God. They know God in theory. They know God religiously. They know God mentally, intellectually. They know about God. But they have never had that tangible, undeniable experience. Amen. They have never had a Mount Carmel day of Pentecost, house of Cornelius encounter with the fire of God falling on them. They have never had a burning bush experience. They have never experienced the power of the Holy Ghost seizing them and taking possession of them. They have never experienced the supernatural... <coughs> Excuse me. They have never experienced the supernatural fire of God burning in their hands, feet, and their hearts. It's sad, but it's true. <clears throat> so many people in this generation today um, think that the fire of God is just a concept. It's just an idea, just something that took place once. But it's not. I came on assignment today to tell you the fire of God is not just a concept. It's not an idea or a theory or philosophy to be studied. Amen. It is not the figment of an overactive imagination. Amen. That's what the world tells you. It's not just religious ramblings. The fire of God is the mighty Holy Ghost. It, he is the third person of the Godhead. He is God and he is might and the power of God. He is the same fire that fell on Mount Carmel, the same fire that fell on the day of Pentecost, the same fire that fell in Cornelius' house. The fire of God is real. It's that same fire that's going to fall today. Hallelujah. If you're open to it, if you're ready for it, if you want to really receive what God has for you, if you're in that place where you're tired of just being one of those ordinary Christians that knows who God is, that knows what God is, but has never really experienced a mighty, tangible, moving of the power of Almighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. The fire of God is tangible. The fire of God is alive. The fire of God is contagious. Amen. And when it hits you, it's going to hit the person next to you and all the way down through the aisle. Because that's how it works. Because even the prophets of Baal had to bow their knee to Almighty God because of the tangible Mighty outpouring that happened that day because they could not deny the power any longer. Their God left them. Yeah. <clears throat> but Almighty God 
came on the scene. Hallelujah. The fire of God is the power of God. The power of God is the only power that can heal. Doctors can cut out disease parts, but doctors can't heal. Doctors can admit radiation and chemo, but even then the body suffers from their harmful side effects. It is only the power of God that can fully restore everything that the devil has tried to take. Hallelujah. It's only the fire of God that can take away that pain that the doctors can't even alleviate. The fire of God can burn drugs out of your system and take the desire all at the same time. And we've seen that happen through our ministry here. For a long time when our good brother was in California, bringing, he would bring uh, kids off the street to us who were on drugs and immediately the, f- the power of the drugs was broken over them as the Holy Ghost fell upon them and their lives were changed forever. <clears throat> the fire of God can restore missing body parts. We've seen that happen and I want to see that happen again. I want to see it before my own eyes. The fire of God can deliver from alcohol, pornography, lust, and perversion. I've seen that happen. And sadly but true, a lot of that is in the, has found its way into the church today. But the fire of God can take care of it. Hallelujah. The fire of God will burn up jealousy, pride, criticism, bitterness, and unforgiveness. The fire of God will heal your broken heart. It will restore joy and peace. The fire of God will heal your marriage. The fire of God will hear your mind. Our brother's here today because the fire of God has touched him. Hallelujah. And restoring to him everything that the devil tried to take away. Hallelujah. The fire of God can destroy witchcraft. We'll tear all the witchcraft down. Hallelujah. There's a church in Africa today. That is hindered because of the witchcraft in their area. The Lord says, no longer shall you be hindered. No longer shall you be troubled. For they shall leave your area or face me. Some will even bow their knee. Hallelujah. My prayer is, God, do it again. Let the fire fall. That same fire that fell on the day of Pentecost. That same fire that fell on the Gentiles in Cornelius' house. Do it again. Let the fire fall. Let it fall on us. Come suddenly. Come forcibly. Come powerfully. Rush in on us. Seize us. Take possession of us. Fill us to overflowing. Hallelujah. Who wants to be filled to overflowing today? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm not just satisfied with just being, uh, uh, just making it by. I want that tangible, undeniable Hallelujah, that that outpouring of Almighty God. We're not satisfied just to read about it and sing about it. We want to experience it for ourselves. Hallelujah. This morning, even at work, I was had a song going through Revival, Fire Fall. Revival, Fire Fall. Gwen has a song like that. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus said, Ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. He told them, tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Sometimes I think what happens is we're in such a hurry to get out of here on Sunday mornings that we don't tarry tarry around long enough for the power to really come upon us. The altar call goes out and we run out the door. And yet we have needs. We need this tangible outpouring of God in our lives, in our finances. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many people need it in their finances. We had a request from one the other day. Their house is being foreclosed upon. But we went to prayer. And by the power of Almighty God, the foreclosure will not go through. But a loan will come through. The money will come in. That need will be met. Hallelujah. This power is not a theory or concept. This power is the same power that caused the sun and the moon to stand still. It's the same power that divided the Red Sea, caused water to flow out of a rock like a river. It's the same power that made the three Hebrew children fireproof. That gave Daniel's lion's lockjaw. That shook 
Paul and Silas' prison off its foundations. This is the same power that was upon Jesus' life that opened the blind eyes, unstopped deaf ears, made the lame to walk and the dumb to talk. This is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. And if you remember, when Jesus was on the mountain praying, the power of God that came upon him that night was so strong that it shook the graves open. Hallelujah. It is the same fire, the same anointing, the same power that God wants to send on your life right now. Did you hear that? Right now. He fell on all them that heard the word. He wants to fall on every person that is hearing this word. He wants to send revival to Poland, to that church that is waiting for a mighty outpouring of God. Hallelujah. He wants to touch. He wants to heal. He wants to deliver. He wants to set free. Hallelujah. He fell on them that heard the word. He wants to fall on every person that is hearing this word. The word made a way for the fire. Hallelujah. It opened their hearts so they could receive it. God is wanting to fall on your life with a tangible, undeniable, irrefutable, indisputable manifestation of the fire and power of the Holy Ghost. And we need it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let the fire fall. Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Are you thirsty this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Amen. There's the key. We have to open up ourselves Amen. to allow the enemy to come into, or to, excuse me, to allow the Holy Spirit to come into us and to fill us to that overflowing so that we might experience that. Hallelujah. We have to open our ears so we hear the word first. Then we must open our spirits and let him in and ask the Lord to send it to us. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call unto me and I will answer you and show great and mighty things which thou knowest not. We see this happening when people are calling out to God and asking them to move. There's a family in Ohio who God is moving upon their behalf and filling up their fuel tank and putting food on their table because they asked. They said, Lord, we can't do it by ourselves. We need your help. Hallelujah. Hunger is a powerful magnet. Hunger will draw the anointing. Hunger will open the door for the manifestation of the power of God. Are you hungry for what the Lord has for you? Are you hungry for that manifestation of the Holy Spirit in your lives? I am talking to anybody who is hungry for the presence and the power of God. I am talking to anyone who wants the reality of the tangible manifestation of the anointing and power of God. And I know without a shadow of a doubt there are people sitting in this place that need the mighty outpouring of God upon their lives because they cannot do it themselves. Hallelujah. I am talking to anybody who is not just satisfied with religion and tradition, not satisfied with concepts and theories and philosophies. I am talking to anyone who wants the power of Pentecost in your life. We are living in the greatest day Ever, because God has said in these end times that he would pour out his spirit greater than at any time in history. Amen. We are in those days and those hours, and it's time for his spirit to be poured out. But do we want the change? Do we want that manifestation in our lives? Or do we want to leave here the same way we came? The great apostle of faith, Smith Wigglesworth, said, Every soul touched by Pentecost should be a live wire on fire, red hot with God's power. Hallelujah. I want to see God's people that way, running here and there. They can't keep quiet because they have to tell everybody they know. They're laying hands on everybody they see who's sick, who's in a wheelchair, who's blind, who's deaf, who's lame. Hallelujah. And they're receiving because they've got themselves plugged into the power of Almighty God. They've experienced the tangible outpouring in their own lives. And so they, it's just spilling out to all those around them. Hallelujah. 
I believe there are some hungry and thirsty people listening to me right now. I know there is. Who refuse to be satisfied or pacified with anything less than a personal encounter with the true fire of God. Hallelujah. We get requests every week. Lord, let the fire fall upon us. We need that fire. Hallelujah. All over the world, the fire is falling. Here, the fire is falling. I can see it in the spirit realm. I feel it in my spirit. Hallelujah. Somebody is going to catch on fire today. Somebody is going to get hit by the power of God today. The power of God is going to seize your life, take hold on your life, and set your life on fire. Our God is a consuming fire. He doesn't just consume the wood and the stubble. He consumes it all. Hallelujah. He even licked up all the water. Hallelujah. Everything that was there. And so when God comes in, he consumes everything that is there, all the bad, and takes it away so that we are white as snow. Hallelujah. There is a consuming anointing in this house right now. Hallelujah. Just as the fire of God fell on Mount Carmel and consumed everything, the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, the dirt, the water, and the trench, so also is a consuming fire of God falling on your life right now. Hallelujah. I know I just said that, but it was in the notes too. Hallelujah. I feel something happening right now. I feel an anointing falling in this house. I feel the fire of God falling in this house. Yes, the God we serve still answers by fire. Hallelujah. Wherever there is an altar, wherever there is a sacrifice, wherever there is prevailing prayer, wherever there are hungry hearts, wherever there is desperation for him, the God who answers by fire is right here now. But do we really want it? He is here to save you, to heal you, to deliver you, to restore your marriage, to heal your broken heart. He is here to revive you, resurrect you, put his fire back in you. He is here to give you a fresh anointing, to set your heart and your life on fire. Hallelujah. Come on all over this house. Lift your hands and ask him to fall on you. Ask him to send the fire right now. Hallelujah. Fire of God, fall on us today. Fall on our hearts, our lives. Fall on our marriages. Fall on our ministries. Fall on our visions and dreams. Fall on our attitudes. Fall on our families, our finances. Fall on our minds. Fall on our bodies. Fall on the world. Hallelujah. Consume it all. Fire of God, fall on us. Consume us. Burn up dead religion. Burn up carnality. Burn up dead traditions. Burn up everything that is not of you and set us on fire. Come right now. Come, fire of God. Come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord, send that fire down upon us. Hallelujah. Let it consume us, Lord. Hallelujah. Let it spill onto others around us, Lord. Hallelujah. That we can't keep quiet about you, Lord, but we go forth doing the things that you have called us to do. Hallelujah. We thank you for that. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. I'm going to open the altars and we'll have communion when the Lord is done with what he wants to do. We still have a few minutes yet. But the Lord wants to move. There are people in here today that are in need. Do not leave the same way that you came, but come and receive the fire that Almighty God has for you. It is life-changing. You will not be the same. You will not leave here feeling the same way that you came. It doesn't matter where you have been or what has happened in the last months or years or whatever because today is a new day today is a new start and today you will receive that infilling that you are missing that lack that you don't know what is but you've been asking the Lord about Lord what is that lack I don't understand it it's here today it will fall upon you today if you will open up and but receive it you will see this week all the things that have happened all over the world. Do not sit back and say, Lord, why did it not happen to me when you never got out of your seat to receive what the Lord Almighty God had for you this morning? Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The altar is open. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And like I said, we have communion, but we'll have that when the Spirit of God is done moving. Hallelujah. Sometimes I think in communion interrupts the Spirit of God because afterwards people forget what was happening and they don't want to come for what they need. So today we're going to do it a little differently. And we're going to open the altars first so you come and get what you need. Do not leave here the same. For truly the Spirit of Almighty God is here. It is stronger than I have ever felt it. Hallelujah. It is truly life changing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. There's somebody here today who needs a miracle. They can't go on anymore without the touch of God upon their lives. There's somebody here today who needs to get back to the place they once were with God. He's been calling out to you today because now it's that time and now is that hour. There's somebody here today who needs a financial miracle. They can't make it without the touch of God in their lives. Hallelujah. <clears throat> There's somebody here today who's got a family member who needs a touch of God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to shut this off for now. Hallelujah. Spirit 